We have a jam-packed and ultra-transformative week full of planetary transits. We have a bunch going on. Right out the gate, Mercury goes direct on the 15th, allowing us to review the valuable lessons we've learned since the beginning of April. Jupiter will transit into Taurus this week, making it easier to indulge in the softer things in life. Jupiter will also make a square with Pluto, which could be very revealing in the way we've abused power. Mars will be at the 29th degree of Cancer, which could cause us to release some stuck emotions emotions, but maybe not in the best way possible. There's a new moon in Taurus this week, which could help us start a new path that brings us comfort, which of course I will do a separate podcast and video for that so it won't be covered in this podcast itself. And I'm not done yet. Mars is going into Leo this week, which should give us the opportunity to take action in a regal way. And on Sunday, Gemini season begins, allowing us to boost our confidence through intellectual happenings. Yep, this is a big week full of planetary transits, as I said in the beginning, and so it'll be anything but boring, and the vibes on the graph are absolutely reflective of that. It's pretty obvious there's a bunch of fixed sign energy going on because we have a bunch of vibes that are at steady streams, meaning we'll be feeling some of these vibes throughout the week. One of the first vibes is mental energy. Mental energy will be present from the 14th all the way up until the 21st. This happens to be one of the highest vibes on the graph, so we could be in our heads this week. We could be in problem-solving mode this week because this is a week of finding solutions to long-standing problems, getting out of ruts and things like that, so we really are going to have to use our intellect to get out of certain situations and not just getting out of situations improving circumstances around us with a week like this it's no surprise that we have a steady stream of solitude energy this will be intersecting romantic energy psychic energy emotional sensitivity some good luck energy and one of the other vibes on the graph that's the highest and this happens to be ambitious vibes with a dynamic week like this and all of the hardcore energies we have we're going to feel motivated to get things done like i said it is about making improvements this week this is about solving issues that need to be resolved and also just going after some of the goals that we might have had on the back burner for ourselves also with that emotional sensitivity and that solitude and that psychic vibe stuff we could feel more extrasensory than normal we're in some sensory territory being in this big Taurus energy we've got that huge Taurus stellium Jupiter going to Taurus and a whole bunch of other things that's a sign of the senses and so I know because it's an earth sign a lot of people would not attribute that to psychic sensory but Taurus is of the senses and is about feeling things and there are people who feel things more than they have the visuals from psychic abilities or the clairvoyance, clairessience, claircognizance from the abilities. Clairsentience is what I believe that this could cause, where you're feeling things on a visceral level, but in a psychic sense. And this could be through picking up smells. Sometimes some people's psychic abilities come through aroma. There could be a hint of something in the air that enunciates your psychic senses. And again, this is a week that's a little raw with all that emotional sensitivity there and the solitude energy. So we are going to need some time to ourselves. We are going to need moments to pull back. There are some good energies that are great for being a little bit social at times. So it's not as if we're going to, you know, completely withdraw from society or anything like that. But this is a week where we can feel mixed baggy in terms of hanging out with people. So yeah, this is a big week for sure. Let's look at the next bunch of days and see what we can expect. As a reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. There's a link in the description box below. On the 15th, Mercury's going direct. So Mercury will be the first energy to kick off this dynamic week ahead. And this is going to finally put us in a position where we can understand some of the themes that have been going on since April 7th. Mercury went into its pre-shadow around that point in time, then went retrograde on the 21st. So this is going to put us in a position now that we're going to be heading into this post-shadow to review everything that was going on through those times regarding Torian themes in our lives. But since this is the post-shadow portion, we can navigate through this easier than we do through retrogrades. Retrogrades obviously are times of confusion. It's times where we're retracing our steps. And this being in Torian themes, it could have been anything to do with our values, anything to do with finances, anything to do with how we earn our money, anything to do with comfort, security, reliability, our self-esteem, self-respect, and having standards for ourselves. So these are the things that we'll be reviewing from now all the way up until May 31st because it will finally go out of its post shadow around that time. So we've had this long extended period of Mercury being in Taurus and Mercury being 
in its retrograde season in Taurus. But at least we're at the clarity point of this energy. So any alignments Mercury is making from now all the way up until the 31st will be post shadow alignments and we'll be able to go through those much easier than we did during the retrograde. On that same day, Mars is making a connection with Neptune. Mars is going to make a trine with Neptune on that day. And this is one of the reasons why we were seeing that psychic energy. The sun's also going to make a harmonious alignment with Neptune as well. This is where I'm saying we'll have some sweet spots throughout the week that'll help us. Some of the heftier stuff occurring through this week. But an alignment like this is a lot of fun. It's great for taking action, even though it's a trine. And trines generally are very lazy energy, so it's hard to take action. Trines, a lot of times things fall in our lap. We don't usually go after it. But since we have Mars and Neptune in this harmony, it gives us the ability to take action on some of our hopes and dreams. So we gain the energy to work on some of our hopes. We gain the energy to work on some of our aspirations. Anything that might have seen like a fantasy land or a daydream, we start getting ideas on how to make it real, how to actually go about going after it and making it happen for ourselves. So under this energy, we can feel encouraged to do those things that we've been putting off and putting on hold because we thought that they weren't realistic in some sort of way and make it a tangible thing for ourselves. Also, energy like this is great for romance. So if you're looking to rev up the intimacy in your life, this is a lovely alignment for that. It's great for being dreamy in romantic situations as well and doing adventurous things that heightens your connection with someone because an alignment like this pronounces the need to go out and have fun and have an adventure, but also connect on a spiritual level with someone you're interested in or someone you're already committed to. On the 16th, Jupiter is entering Taurus. Hopefully everyone was able to capitalize on all of the wonderful things that came with Jupiter and Aries and you were able to seize the moment and use it to start a new path. Use it to kickstart something in your life because we won't see that happening. We won't see that transit of Jupiter through Aries until April 21st, 2034. So we've got quite a bit of time since Jupiter takes about 11, 11 and a half to 12 years to go through the entire zodiac. So the next time we'll have that alignment will be a long time from now. It'll be a completely different decade. Decade. But for the next year, Jupiter is moving into Taurus. We will have this until the end of May of 2024. So we'll be able to capitalize on this energy. It stays in Taurus a bit longer than it does in Aries. It kind of bounces in and out of Aries. And the good thing about this is it's going to shift the dynamics of how we go after our opportunities, how we chase luck in our lives, our beliefs, our philosophies, how we approach expansion overall, and looking at how we travel through the world on a long distance level. And I say shift the tone because we go from that high octane approach of Aries to a more mellower way of going about things. So having Jupiter in Taurus is going to soften a bunch of things. It's going to soften some of those rough edges. We aren't going to be accelerating as fast as we did while Jupiter was in Aries. As a matter of fact, this is going to be a slower process to just getting to where we need to get. And by that, whatever goals we have in mind, whatever opportunities we have in mind, whatever type of fortune we're trying to chase for ourselves or any other types of goals will take time. But the great thing about them taking time is at least they will stick. The great thing with Aries energy is it kickstarts us and it gets us off our asses so that way we're going after whatever we want. But it's a fast burning energy and it burns out very easily. In Taurus we see what's on the horizon and we examine it for a little bit before we go after it. And once we do go after whatever it is, we're consistent and we're persistent in terms of expansion in our lives. And some of the goals that we set out in Aries in terms of being more expansive in our lives may take another term in terms of Taurian themes. And those Taurian themes could have us looking at creating a softer life for ourselves. Taurus is about creating comfort and stability and making sure you have everything you need, making sure all of your needs are met. So we could seek out creature comforts. We could seek out, again, the monetary thing. Taurus has a lot to do with the money that we earn. So this could be something that we're looking to build in our lives. We're we're looking to build comfort in those terms on a material sense, but we're also looking to build comfort so that we have those feel good things in our lives as well. And we could do this in a big way and we could do this in an indulgent way. Sometimes that's a good thing in this energy and sometimes it could be a lower vibration of this, but nonetheless, will become fixated on growth that improves our lives for the better. Because Taurus is about self-esteem, self-worth, and what we value, this could be a period where we're trying to amplify those areas of our lives. In other words, this could be a time where you're looking to raise your standards, you're focusing on the things that bring you value in your life, you're focusing on opportunities and situations that are worth your time, and you're wanting to learn the art of self-respect so that way you're able to boost your self-esteem without having to get it from outside, in outside influences. 
practices. We could really work on educating ourselves on how to put these practices into use. We could feel an enunciated need for peace in our lives. Taurus is one of those energies that is seeking tranquility, is seeking easy, like I was saying before, it is seeking those creature comforts, but it's also not wanting to get in the mess. It's not wanting to get into the shit with other people. And just overall learning how to relax. So this could be a period where you're learning that it's time for you to take a more softer, a more softer approach to your life and not allowing the harsher things to get in, not allowing people to disturb your peace, not allowing situations to bring you into a place of turbulence. And although Jupiter is a go-getter sort of planet, is a planet about going after what you want, it's a planet about shooting your shot, taking big risks, we may not be as risky in this energy. And so this could also translate into doing things that aren't necessarily so grindy. In other words, it may not be the most ambitious time. Again, it's a slow energy. And sometimes that overambition can be a problem. This is where I'm going with this. Comfort sometimes gets sacrificed when we're always constantly grinding and being on that hustle and bustle mode. And in Taurus energy, it's not about that. It's a hardworking energy, but it also wants its comfort. So while you might be interested in earning more or going after lofty goals, this may be a time where you're looking at taking a more slower approach to those things that isn't going to put you in a place of discomfort, that isn't going to have you out there grinding 24-7 for the things that you want. That way you could be more at ease and be in your body and be in the moment. Taurus is of the body. Taurus rules our senses and it's about the gifts of being in the body and enjoying those pleasures and enjoying the comfort that comes with that, enjoying all the good things in life like food and drink and nice clothing and any other sensory things that we enjoy. So this could be a time where you're seeking that kind of peace in your life and you're wanting to bring those qualities in by amplifying peace in your life. One of the other good things about this alignment is we don't lose interest as much as we do in Aries. Aries energy is a quick burn energy. It's interested in something and vigorously interested in it for about 15 minutes and then it burns out depending on the circumstances. It's not saying that the Aries energy can't stay the course because it absolutely can when it's relentless, but Taurus has has more staying power. And so in this energy, if you're pursuing Jupiterian things like education, say you're wanting to go back to school, say you're wanting to start school, anything to do with higher education, and it doesn't have to be college, it could be things like starting courses or anything you're trying to learn, this is a time where you can retain that. You may kind of have a slow start to it, but at the same time, you will stick with whatever you're trying to learn. You will stick with whatever you're trying to educate yourself about. Another way we can amplify our energy in this is through excursions. And the excursions may not be so adventurous as they were in Aries, but it could be about taking a trip that's luxurious. It could be about taking a trip that's bringing you comfort. Since Taurus is a nature sign, this could be just doing things in nature, going on excursions when it comes down to that, like going camping. And maybe going camping in a way that's not necessarily roughing it. It might be a glamping style when we're under this type of Taurian energy. It's like doing those things, but doing it in a chic way. And speaking of luxurious, this could be a time of indulgence. And again, that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you need to treat yourself. But in this energy, we could spend a little bit more than we normally do just to have the nicer things. An energy like this can take on a very celebratory tone as well. So this will be a time of wanting to throw parties. This will be a time of wanting to indulge in alcohol and the best food and other things that help you have fun in a sensory sort of way, which of course leads me to the lower vibration in this energy. Again, we can overindulge and we can overconsume. Taurus is about what we consume and having that with Jupiter, which is already a planet of excess and indulgence. We might have to be aware of how much we're taking in. Moderation could really be a problem under this energy especially the way it might be aspecting your chart. So it's just something to be aware of if you need to pull back a little bit. So that way you're not overdoing it on those things. And again, this could translate into overspending in a lot of ways. It's also good to be mindful of that. This could amplify greed in some ways too, because unfortunately with one of the lower vibrations of Taurus, it could lead to greed in terms of material things. Also, of course, anything you consume and things like that. So that's also something that could be amplified. That's something that we could see within ourselves. That's something we might see more of on a world stage and a more exposed sort of way. We also need to be aware of feeling like we're too good for something because in this energy, it has high standards and self-respect and Jupiter being an amplifier, this could amplify arrogance in a lot of ways. This could amplify feeling like you might be better than someone else or feeling like you're too good for something or too good to budge on an opinion 
or a decision and you know getting into getting locked into an idea for the sake of it or getting locked into an opinion and even if you're wrong cutting off your own nose despite your face because you just want to be right it's a very stubborn static sort of energy and so combined with Jupiter that can be problematic as well but yeah other than that I mean Jupiter and Taurus is going to be a mellow time I want to say it's going to be a fun time with some of the energies it's a softer energy of course it can inflate some harder things because there are harder things with Taurian energy even if even though it may be one of the most easiest signs but yeah let's soak up this amplified tranquility and right out the gate Jupiter is making a square with Pluto which can expose an inflated sense of greed squares between Jupiter and Pluto aren't frequent the last one we had was August 4th of 2017 and of course it brings out some world events it can bring out some individual events I say the world events because we're dealing with two outer planets and those outer planets inflate those themes that we see on a collective level also if we're being connected to it or hit by it individually it can also inflate certain things within our chart as well but with energy like this it's very exposing so if somebody's been doing something they're not supposed to in terms of greed anything to do with consumption anything to do with money it tends to rear its ugly head it tends to expose those scenarios and so we can have a day where we're seeing things play out in that sort of way where things to do with greed get exposed on a monetary level, but also in just an overall selfish level, a selfish person, someone who doesn't, someone who lacks vulnerability, someone who lacks empathy. There could be problems when it comes down to those things. This could also come as a reality check that we can't have it all as we want. And again, this ties back into greed. Sometimes, you know, it's nothing wrong with wanting to have it all. There's nothing wrong with wanting to go after those things, but it's the way in which a person goes after those things. And so this is the uglier side of that. And that can also be more exposed within this energy this could also enunciate issues with people who throw their weight around people who have more authority and people who have clout and they might have been abusing their power in some sort of way so there can be a lot of power struggles within this energy so if you're in a situation with someone who happens to be a very dominant type this could be a clash today in terms of that with the person that's believing that they have the right to lord over others overall this is one of those energies where something is brought to light in a big way so it's very uncovering in terms of whatever's hidden doesn't always have to be a negative thing it could be discovering something in terms of something that might have been missing some of that was forgotten and finally you know you're finding that missing link to whatever it might be and or discovering a solution to a long-standing problem to get yourself back on track and one of the other good things within this energy is it does help in terms of ambition and drive and feeling motivated to get things done and go after whatever we need so it's good for that it's just that you have to watch where you veer in terms of veering on the wrong side of this type of energy. This ties into that grand cross that I was talking about last week. So it's going to inflate some of that as well. So some of those themes can come up and you know, with the grand cross, it is going to put a lot of pressure in terms of getting out of stuck patterns, in terms of getting out of stale periods. So it can have a pressure cooker vibe to it. And when you have a pressure cooker situation, sometimes it feels like the lid blows off of something. So it's heavy energy. We'll feel this energy for a bunch of weeks. Again, it ties into that grand cross so we'll feel this for about a good three weeks so this is not just going to happen on the one day and then we're done with it we're dealing with slower moving energies so this will be present with us until about the first week of june or so and then it starts tapering off as we get to the month of june at least on the 18th we have a fun energy the sun is going to make a sextile with neptune and the lovely thing about this is it's great for gaining a sense of self through metaphysical fun and it promotes a lot of optimism this promotes that type of optimism in believing in yourself again and feeling confident in yourself again feeling like you could do the thing and make things happen for yourself it also brings a sense of magical thinking in a healthy way because sometimes there's magical thinking that's absolutely not healthy but this brings it in the way of just being able to connect with your imaginative side which also translates into creativity and feeling inspired to make something happen for yourself this could be a day where we're wanting to ground our energies with all the other heavier stuff that's going on through this week we could feel like connecting to our spiritual side we could feel like connecting to our mystical side so sometimes this could be through tarot sometimes this could be through you know going to crystal and stone shops or feeling the need to meditate so you can ground your energy also this is lovely energy for healing practices so if you're into any of the healing modalities in terms of energy work this is lovely for that and it's just a good day to do something fun and Neptunian, like going to see a movie, enjoying good music, appreciating art, appreciating a good film. 
or even heading out to like a poetry reading at a coffee shop. But overall, it's a lovely energy and we absolutely need it because on that day, we have Mars at the 29th degree of Cancer, which can feel like a lot of pressure emotionally. Mars is also connected with that grand fixed cross. So we have a bunch of planets that are starting to really move towards that exact point of that grand fixed cross that I was talking about last week and momentarily when I was talking about Jupiter Pluto square. But Mars at this degree, the 29th degree of Cancer, it can be problematic in the sense where if we've been storing up emotions, they can come spilling out to the surface and that in itself could be very uncomfortable. As I was saying before, when Jupiter got to the 29th degree of Aries, you know, we're in cardinal energy and 29 degrees of cardinal energy can be quite harsh a lot of the time. So it's good to pay attention to how our moods are being activated by it and other things around us because under this alignment, it can bring up past situations that we've been holding on to and cause us to spill over emotionally, like I was saying earlier because even though cancer is a cardinal sign and can be direct there are times where the cancerian thing is to hold on to things and sometimes holding on to things can be holding on to past resentments maybe from overdoing it with other people and by overdoing it overly being nice and doing everything for everyone and not doing something for yourself and sometimes it can come out in a way where there's resentment that's been building up and once it boils over to the surface it can look like an emotional outburst so do the best you can when this energy hits on the 19th, we have our first post-shadow alignment with Mercury making a sextile to Saturn. And the great thing about this is it is excellent for having constructive communication. So if there was a situation that you were having during the retrograde where maybe you weren't able to complete something with someone or even sign documents, because this is also excellent for signing documents, finalizing something that needs to be finalized on paper or just in a committal sense, this could be a day where you're finally seeing that this is finally going through. This could be a day where you're finally able to get through the person that you're trying to have a conversation with. This is not the most dramatic sort of energy when it comes down to communication. So it may not have been an argument. It just may not have been a time where you could discuss whatever you need to discuss fully. Or this could be a time where you're finally able to negotiate with someone that you've wanted to negotiate with, but just never felt like the right timing. This tends to go over very well under this alignment because people are less concerned with their own hangups and they're wanting to get the job done. So something like this could also come up as a result. And if you are struggling with making some sort of long term plan during the retrograde or you just couldn't sit down and commit yourself to it this could be a time where you're feeling that you're going right back to whatever plan that was that you needed to make and you're able to focus your energy and stick to whatever you're trying to create for yourself so that way you can have some consistency and stability within your life on the 20th, Mars leaves Cancer and heads into Leo. As we leave the nurturing vibes of Mars and Cancer, we shift to a more passionate and dynamic approach when it comes to taking action in our lives. And so now we have a Mars that is ready and geared up to go after whatever it wants. This is the type of Mars that goes after the things it needs unapologetically. This is the type of Mars that's not afraid to stand out in the crowd. And so we can feel more driven. We can feel more revved up in this energy. Mars combined with Leo is like our motivational coach and it is encouraging us to go out and get them and do it with flair. And one of the great things is this is not the type of Mars that burns out as fast or gets as scattered. This is actually a very focused Mars. So whatever it is that you're trying to achieve under this energy, you'll do it in a persistent and a very consistent sort of manner. So out of the Mars in fire sign placements, this is one that's concerned with the long haul. This is the one that's concerned with the stability because it is in fixed energy. It is fixed fire, so it's needing to know that it's got that consistency. Energy like this motivates us to not fade to the background. So if we've been finding ourselves falling back a little bit, if we've been allowing others to take the spotlight or credit in that sort of way. This type of energy motivates us to do what we need to do in order to stand out for our unique talents. So if you've been shying away from goals or putting something out there like a work of art, because this is also a very creative Mars, this could be a time where you're feeling more comfortable with putting it out there and you're just ready to get it going. So that way you are standing out for what you create. And speaking of creativity, if you happen to be the artistic type, it doesn't always necessarily have to be sketching or painting or anything like that. It could be other mediums that you use, this could be a time where you're feeling ultra inspired by this energy and you're able to get your projects done. You're able to get your art out there because this energy could be muse-like, but in a way that pumps you up and is more high octane, not like a muse like you get in Pisces, but more so a muse that ignites your passion to create something beautiful. Mars has to do with our sex drive and paired with Leo, we might be seeking a more passionate experience. We might be seeking a more romantic experience and in some ways, a more casual experience. 
It's not to say that Leo energy isn't committal. It definitely is. And you can get commitments out of this energy. This is not one of the flakier energies, but I would say that this is neutral when it comes down to this energy. So if you are seeking a serious relationship, it'll be a time to seize the moment. So that way you ensure that you're attracting the right types to yourself that offer commitment. If you're just looking for a good time, this energy has you covered because it's about enjoying yourself in a passionate way, in an intimate way. And how this can translate for couples, this could rev up your sex drive. This could rev up bedroom antics between the two of you. Also, this is great for going on adventurous dates and doing something theatrical, doing something dramatic. So we might feel more interested in going out to places that have some boldness to them while offering nonstop entertainment. Energetically, we feel more vibrant than normal in this energy. So we could look for leisurely things that gets us moving and being active. So this could be a time of taking up sports. This could be a time about doing something entertaining, like going dancing, but really just participating in anything that gets you in the mix of everything. Temperament wise, because Mars governs our temper, this is one of those energies where it may be slow in terms of the temperament thing. However, However, it doesn't mean that it can't be explosive. A lot of the times within this energy, it's because it's a fixed sign, sometimes these things can build up within it. It's not to say that there's not a reaction to certain things if someone is disrespectful or being direct about things when it's not okay with something, but we might find ourselves more contained when it comes to our temper until it actually blows up. And that leads me to the lower expression of the sign as there is anytime there's a sign change. The energy with this temperament wise can be kind of explosive at times and it could be rageful and ferocious when it does actually bubble over to the surface. Also within this energy, it is a very regal energy. And so sometimes it can have this temperament that feels like others are beneath them. In other words, it could be a thing of feeling too good to react to others, too good to stoop to someone else's level, which could be a neutral expression and a good thing. However, in this energy, it can come off pompous. We also have to be mindful of being overly competitive within this energy. On the higher vibration of this energy, it's, be, it's about being competitive with yourself and being self-motivating. On the other hand, if you feel like you're not getting the accolades you deserve or you feel like you're not getting the spotlight you deserve, sometimes it could be one of those energies where you're trying to claw your way to the top or in a lot of ways, stepping on other people's toes so that way you get into the front of the row. Other than that, Mars and Leo is a welcomed energy. Let's soak this up. On the 21st, the sun is going into Gemini. Happy birthday, Geminis. It's your time to shine intellectually. As we leave the serene, let's do one thing at a time approach to Taurus. We step into a more energetic, let's have as much variety as possible approach in Gemini. So even though we still have a lot of Taurus energy around us, we're still going to feel this Gemini vibe. We also have Mars being in Leo, so that's also going to further energize things. But in a lot of ways, this Gemini season is absolutely going to feel different because of the more grounded energy we have around us with that Taurus stellium that's occurring. But under Gemini energy, our egos gain a considerable boost from intellect. Our egos gain a considerable boost from communication and overall just taking a very upbeat, easy breezy approach to life. Because Gemini energy is easy breezy, it's not the biggest shift in that sense from Taurus, but in terms of the activity levels and being hyperactive, it's absolutely a shift in that regard. But this is a time where we'll find ourselves being more playful. We'll want to engage and mingle and have those social happenings that generally occur in Gemini season. So we'll have a huge desire to partake in the fun antics, explore our local scene, and just let our curiosity run wild. Influence, it could feel like a hyperactive time when it comes down to communication. And the great thing about Gemini season is we have the mental bandwidth to deal with people, to be social. There are times in life where we just aren't feeling it and we're needing to reserve our energy to ourselves. And under this influence, especially with Mars and Leo being there, and then eventually Mercury will be in Gemini during Gemini season, it's going to really help us in terms of wanting to mingle with other people. So this could be a very social time for us where we're on our phones and constantly DMing and texting all day long. This could be a time where we're seeking more versatility in our life. This is a very ambidextrous sign. And if you felt like you were stuck in a rut during Taurus season, and again, we still have all this Taurus energy, but if you felt like you were more stuck for a little bit, if you felt as though you couldn't focus on multiple things at a time, this could be a period where you're able to multitask. This could be a period where you're able to bring some variety in your life. And variety in your life could be having more options in terms 
terms of either career goals, projects, in terms of other things you have in your life, in terms of social circles, because sometimes we need variety in that. It's good to have different friend groups to suit your moods and needs and other facets of your personality because we're not all just one thing. We're multifaceted in terms of the things and interests that we have. So this could be a period where you're working on that. So that way you're ensuring that you have that variety in your life intellectually and just mental stimulation wise this could be a period where we're wanting to learn new things this could be a time where we're wanting to pick up new topics and just finding ways to diversify our knowledge so it could really be a period of going on a intellectual quest because an energy like this gives us the urge to feed our need for data and facts and knowing a little bit about this and some more about that and maybe a little bit of this. And that's because of the jumpiness of this energy. So we can find ourselves being more fascinated in a variety of topics as a result of this, which also leads me to the lower expression of this vibration because there's always a lower expression when you have a planet changing signs. And with something like this, we can put too many feathers in too many caps and cause ourselves to feel more scattered than normal. The great thing about Gemini energy is it's ambidextrous. The problematic thing about Gemini energy is it tends to scatter itself all across the board. And as a result, you end up having a whole lot of half finished projects. Sometimes I like to reference it as reference this as being the butcher, baker, and candlestick maker. And that sort of thing, it can be great. But at the same time, if you're unable to manage that, you can reach a bottleneck and then you can end up burning yourself out as a result of that. This could be a flighty energy as well due to putting itself in so many different places. So sometimes within this energy, we may get ghosted more than normal. We may be left on red more than normal under an alignment like this because people tend to be all over the place. It could be flaky in that way. And obviously sometimes when people do that, it they mean no harm and other times, yeah, they're being somewhat shady about it. And this is because in Gemini energy, the lower expression, we deal with dubiousness. And the dubious nature of Gemini can sometimes be gossipy, sometimes two-faced. And so there could be confrontations as a result of things like that. And we have to be aware of getting bored too quickly under an alignment like this, because within the energy, it's hopping from one thing to another. It's like being a hummingbird, going from flower to flower. And sometimes within this, we might pick up something and then all of a sudden decide, ah, it's not stimulating enough. I need to go to the next thing. And so also that can be another problem within this energy. Other than that, Gemini season is generally fun and upbeat and we really need that energy with some of the harsher tones that we have. This week, even with some of the harder energies, at least we got some doses of lovely energy as a result of it. Overall, this was a highly, highly transformative week full of planetary transits. So yeah, let's seize every opportunity that we can. Anyway, I hope you all have the best week ever. Later and see you in the next episode.